Hi everyone, CC Obi Wan Kenobi here. Today, we're going to be doing another terrarium with a moth and a skull. This turned out pretty amazing. I added some LED lights that make it glow. I really hope you guys stick around for the video. It is a little long, but I promise it's definitely worth it. So, if you could definitely hit the subscribe button, give me that thumbs up, and maybe leave a comment. I really appreciate it. It's absolutely free, and it also helps you with your algorithm. The more stuff you like like mine, the more independent artists will show up on your page. So, without further ado, let's get into it. This video is a little long, so thank you for sticking with me and watching it if you want to create your own. Please subscribe to my channel, so that way you can see some of the cool stuff I create in the future. To start this project off, you're going to want to find yourself a pretty cool jar. I drilled a hole in the bottom so I can put this AA battery pack and wire some LED lights. These are actually two rocks that I glued together in the center to create an arch. We're going to put a skull on it. So going through my stuff, I found this snake, which I made a different type of terrarium which I will link in the description below, so you can watch that video. However, for this one, we're going to be using this skull. Let me find the bottom of it. Here we go. So I'm going to have this guy have his mouth open, and I end up putting an LED light inside the skull to help the jar glow. I'm also going to use one of these scorpions, a moth, as well as a butterfly. Again, make sure you're subscribed because I'm going to be doing a few more of these jars in the future. As you can tell, I have quite a few bugs to figure out what to do with them. I'd love to hear some recommendations down in the comments. This is the glue that I use. It's mercury medium hold with a spray accelerant. So I'm going to put the skull together, make sure that the skull or the jaw can actually open fully. Once I have it in a good location, I'm going to glue down the bottom part. Make sure you're pretty confident of where you want this because this glue that I'm using definitely doesn't like to come unstuck. I positioned the top part of the skull to be able to open, but the back of it to actually be touching the rock. This will give it extra support, so that way I'm not just gluing the skull to each other, but rather I can glue it to itself and the rock in multiple locations. I would recommend that if you are going to add LED lights like I did, you do that before you put the rock inside the jar. It definitely became way more complicated trying to work inside a small container. To stick the rock to the bottom of the jar, I used two part epoxy. I just poured a thick layer on the bottom and then stuck the rock where I wanted it. I used a torch to pop the bubbles, but you really don't need to because I end up covering the bottom with moss. You can cover it with rock or different foliage. Whatever you want. Have fun with it. Once you put the rock in the location that you want, you're going to want to make sure the epoxy dries overnight. Also, make sure you're planning out, if you are going to use wiring, where the hole is in perspective to the skull. After the resin cured, 
I was able to add the moss in the bottom of the jar to cover up the rest of the resin. I used two different kinds of mosses to definitely break it up so it's not just one color. I recommend getting these really long tweezers that I use to be able to work around the rock and the skull. It makes it way easier, especially as you put more and more stuff inside the jar. Now we're going to pin the butterflies. First, you're going to want to rehydrate all the insects that you're using. I use two containers. The top one is completely dry. And then I use a really damp paper towel underneath to be able to seal it. And the humidity will rehydrate the scorpion and moth. These scorpions are really cool because they actually glow under a UV light. This is a good opportunity to hit that like. You're going to want to let both the moth and insects dehydrate for a few days. Some of the larger insects can even take up to a week. You want to make sure they're fully hydrated before moving them or else you can break wings or legs. I use this needle to actually add some water inside the abdomen of the moth. This just helps the body rehydrate faster and it will prevent any of the legs or antenna from breaking. I then seal these containers and let them rehydrate. After a few days, you can definitely see the wings are able to be opened up and the scorpion can actually be moved. His tail, we put that in position a little bit later. I really recommend looking at some of the videos on YouTube on how to pin butterflies and moths. Moths are definitely a lot tougher than the butterfly so you can kind of maneuver their wings a lot easier. You want to make sure that you pin the thorax down first and then open up the wings using kind of a pin to figure out the position. Once you have the position, I add a pin at the very top of the wing where the main vein is to hold it in place. However, you are going to remove any pins inside the wing or else when it dries out, it could tear the wing or create a very large hole, and we definitely don't want that. So once you have it in position, I use trace paper to put over top the wings and pin all around them. Once you have the trace paper down, you can actually use a pin to move the wings up or down and get them in the position you like. Again, we definitely don't want to put any pins inside the wings, but you want to make sure that you pin down the paper so it's not moving as it dries out. We're going to leave this for a couple days and let the moth dry back out. Once you remove the pins, the insect shouldn't move at all. 
but again, be careful because as they dry out, they become fragile again. I think the scorpion turned out amazing. His claws are open, his stinger's up. It's going to be kind of like they're battling on top of the skull. This butterfly, or moth I should say, is awesome. It almost looks like there's a skull on the back portion of the insect. I keep the pin in the insects and position them somewhat where I like to get a better idea of what this is going to look like. Once I'm fairly happy, I use some UV resin to attach both the moth and the scorpion. I just add a little bit of UV resin to the trace paper and use a needle to brush on some of the resin to the bottom of the scorpion. I'm going to attach the scorpion to the other side of the rock and the moth on top of the skull. Once I have a good coat of UV resin, I put them on the rock and use the UV light to cure it. You can really see the moss and the scorpion glow, even with the lights on. These tweezers definitely help out, but let me tell you, this was quite a pain. It is really hard to get the moth to sit where you want, as you can see. I kind of had to go off camera to make sure I got him in the right position. But once you have them secure, these jars start to look amazing. Let me know down in the comments what you would have done different. I'm pretty proud of this one. Let me zoom in for you. You want to make sure that when you're putting everything in the jar, you keep track of where you drilled the hole so that way you know where the wires are going to be ran. You want them on the back side of the skull. You definitely don't want them to be running on the front, interrupting the scene you're making. This butterfly, I decided that I was going to have flying above the skull. I used a rigid copper to get this effect. Like I said, this is definitely easier to do when the skull is not inside the jar. But you want to run the wire through the mouth to the back of the skull and out the hole. You can see the other LED light supported by the copper. I decided to go red inside the skull. And then a blue LED for the butterfly that's going to be flying above it. Let me move the jar so you actually get a better view. Again, this is really difficult to do inside the jar, so I recommend long tweezers. Also, be very careful when you're putting other material inside the jar because your butterflies and moths 
can be damaged easily. I use these tufts of grass to kind of hide the copper wire that supports the other LED. It also gives a good background behind the skull. I glue the butterfly to the LED light and it looks like it's flying above everything else. Let me turn off some of my lights and give you a better view. Again, I think this turned out pretty awesome. The butterfly floating, the deadhead moth on top of the skull, and then the scorpion looking like he wants to fight everybody. I wire up the battery pack to be able to show the red light inside the skull, and then the blue light that the butterfly is floating on. These are going to be on the same switch, so they both come on at the same time. Here is the final result. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I'm definitely proud of the way it turned out. I think one of the coolest things is when it's glowing and there's no other light. If you enjoyed this, please subscribe, like, and share the video. I would love other people to see what I've done. Thank you so much. Well, what'd you think? I really hope you enjoyed this video. As I've been asking through the whole video, please subscribe and like it. It really does help. But until next time, I hope you all stay safe and keep crafting. See you soon.